Welcome to Church for Business People. Uh, my name is Maridi Wanjao and I am so excited to see you already logging in. Thanks for being here this evening. Thanks for taking the time to be here. Uh, please, as you log in, uh, let us know who you are, where you're logging in from. Uh, if you could just tell us what city, what uh, part of the town uh, you're logging in from, what part of the world you're logging in from. Uh, it's exciting to see so many different people already uh, just checking in uh, to our stream right now. If you are in business, then you are in the right place because this is church for business people. And I'm so excited today. If you have any, by the way, if you have any questions, if you have any um, uh, comments, any observations uh, about business, about kingdom business, then please uh, plug them in, put them into your comment line as well, uh, even as you introduce yourself. And we'd love to just engage as we go along. We'll be, we'll be making sure we engage with some of the things that you're putting in there. Uh, and and also, if you have any prayer requests, by the way, we love to pray for business. So if you have any prayer requests, uh, just put them on the comment line. And you know, one of the things is we are a community. So even now, as you put them down, understand that there are people who are just going to be praying for you in our community, just in this business community. Uh, if you see somebody else's prayer, prayer request, send them a prayer, send them a good thought. So just, just speak a word of faith over their business uh, in this situation. Let's just be in a space where we pray for each other. But if you, I promise you that when you put that prayer down, that we will put some people on prayer uh, for your business uh, in this coming week. And so it's really great to have you here. The purpose of this service is to build a spiritual foundation for your business. Yes, kingdom business. That's what this is all about. Uh, we believe that God uh, desires in this season to see businesses that are resilient, that are established, and that are bringing solutions, bringing kingdom solutions uh, to this society, to the society that they are founded in. And so as we start, uh, again, tell us where you're coming in from and also share, uh, put, hit the share button. Uh, and let your friends know so they can participate with us uh, this evening. And if you would like to stay connected to this community, if you'd like to receive uh, updates from us on just specific business inspiration or different business ideas, a way to just connect with this community, good content, uh, then please also click the link. Uh, there's a link uh, in, your, in your comment line over there. Just click the link and uh, we'll, be able, we'll be sure to send you some information. Uh, keep you updated with the latest. Put you up uh, so that you're always getting the latest stuff uh, from us. Now, as we start, I um, just want to tell you this is going to be an exciting and amazing time together. My friend Kanji Bugwa, who's also a businessman, uh, he's leading us in some inspirational time of worship. And so I want to suggest begin with a word of prayer, if that's okay. So please, uh, just uh, let's, let's believe together. Father, we thank you. Uh, we believe that this is going to be an amazing time. You are God and you are God alone. So Lord, even as we worship you this evening, the reason we start with worship is to declare that there is no God like you, that you are God. And so right now, Lord, we declare that Father God, as we lift you up, as we raise you up, as we praise you, as our praises come up, Lord, we speak that your, your blessings will come down among us. We pray for inspiration. We pray for wisdom. We pray uh, for understanding. I pray that, Lord, you'd unlock somebody who's been locked somewhere, even as we walk through this journey this evening. For we ask this in Jesus' name. And God's people say it together, Amen. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whatever time you are watching this, we want to welcome you into this worship experience. It's a worship and prayer experience. And guys, let me tell you what I believe. I believe that as we put God in his rightful place, as we put him at that place that only he needs to be in our hearts and in our lives, that everything else in our lives falls into its rightful place. Guys, I recognize that there's so many things happening around the world right now. COVID-19 is taking up our mind space, our heart space, our emotional space. Um, the impact on the economy, the impact on our own personal lives and how everything has just kind of slowed down to a grind, to a halt for women. Um, this is what I believe is that God has some very specific things to say to his people in times like these. And at times like this, we can lean into the presence of our Lord that is basically giving courage to the discouraged, that is basically giving hope to someone who's feeling like they have lost all hope right now, wondering where is my next meal going to come from? How am I going to survive? How am I going to be able to go through this situation? God is saying, hope for you. For some of us who are saying, this is my weakest point, Lord, I cannot go any further. The Lord, our God, is saying strength for your journey right now, right now. So we can be able to lift up our hands in worship, lift our hands in praise, lift our hands in prayer, and tell the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, 
God that his children are calling out to him Lord we need you we need you we need you we need your power we need your presence we need your peace we need your healing we need your healing all over this world in every single home in every single um a person who's who's watching this this stream right now god father i pray that the peace of god shall surpass every single understanding that they've ever had lord that they're going to be incredibly shocked by the peace they feel versus what they see around them father this is the god that we serve this is the god that we serve the god who changes situations so lord we lift up this song that just simply says you are god where any mungu Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, we declare this, yeah.
Jesus, we declare this powerful declaration that you are God. You are God and you're good and you are above it all, God. I'm reminded of this scripture, which is uh, Romans 8, 28, uh, which talks about all things are working out for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. And this is something so simple yet so profound that all things are working out. Oh, people of God, if we could actually understand and live this truth in our lives, that all things are working out. Now, I, I, I recognize that what we're going through right now may not be good to us, but we know ultimately it'll be good for us, you know? That's true. It'll be ultimately it'll be good for us. And we can hang on to that truth and that belief that all things are working out in this situation. Speak to your situation. Speak with faith right now and declare that every single thing is working out. Benja, every single thing is working out. Every single thing is working out for you, for your good. If you have been called by this great king and that as, as long as you follow him. Amen. We can look back at one point in our lives, and I declare this, at some point we're going to look back and we're going to see the good out of COVID-19. We're going to see the good. We're going to look back and it'll be a story that we'll be telling our children or our grandchildren. Oh, remember in 2020 and this and this happened, but this is how God came through for us. This is how God showed himself to be strong. So let's declare this together, that all things are working out.
your situation. Sing it prophetically, declaring that yes, indeed, what you're going through right now may not feel good. It may not even be good, but it will work out good. It will work out. rightful place at the center at the center of it all now guys the the world as we know it has changed um, the tension in the air is palpable I mean we were talking about it even here um, we're sanitizing every song um, <laughs> without reason to <laughs> you know trying to make sure that we have social distance between us um, things that weren't a thing um, a month ago. Uh, our vulnerability has been kind of exposed you know, right to the core. Um, it really has. And I love God's word and how it speaks directly to us. Um, and, and, you know, I already quoted Romans, um, but I'll just say it again because here is a whole scripture. Romans 8, 26 to 8, 28. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Do you feel weak right now or exposed in one way or another? For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Lord, this is our prayer. This is our cry. And Lord, we confess that we have not put you at the center of everything, that this thing has taken preeminence and it has taken the main focus of our lives, this COVID-19. But Father, right now in this space, in this time, we want to declare, Lord, that you are at the center. We want to put you in the center center of our lives, center of our families, center of our businesses, center of our nation's economies, centers or at the center of the entire world and everything that's happening. God, we place you in the center and we declare Jesus is at the center of it all. Yes. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all.
be the center of my life. Candy say, Oh, would Jesus be the center of my life? Oh. See, from beginning to the end, it will always be. Jesus, we declare that you are at the center of it all. 
We declare that you alone are at the center of it all. I want to say this prayer specifically for the global church, which is seeing such incredible, incredible things happening in the midst of this pain, in the midst of this um, trial. The global church is growing at an unprecedented rate. And so this can be our prayer for the church, that Jesus would be at the center of that church. Join us. Say, Jesus at the center of your church. Jesus be the center. Jesus be the center of your church. encouraged in your journey be encouraged in your walk be encouraged as you stay home wash your hands and don't touch your mouth <laughs> be encouraged as we fight as we seek to find out what God really wants of us at this time but be encouraged that Jesus is at the center of it all God bless you wow that's it. That's it. Yes. Jesus at the center of it all. That's what Kingdom Business is about. Thank you so much, Kanji, for that incredible word. Uh, this is the premise for Kingdom Business. A Kingdom Business is where Jesus is at the center of it all. That he owns and I manage. That he is a senior partner and I am the junior partner. That he is actually the one in the driver's seat. That's what it means for him to be in the center. I'm actually the passenger. And you know what happens when he's the one driving the business and not me? Then I can relax. Why? Because I know that he is in charge. I know that, that it's his, he, he cares more about this business than I do. This business is about the agenda of the kingdom. I'm actually, the reason for my business is to do God's will. So why should my senior partner allow this business to collapse? I can actually sleep because I know he doesn't sleep or slumber. And that's why we say Jesus is at the center of it all. Wow. So welcome. <laughs> welcome, guys. It's so good to see you again. My name is um, Rady Wanjao, and I'm so excited to be hosting you. If you're, if you're just joining us on this stream, please tell us. Uh, where you're checking in from. I uh, would love to just hear different places, whatever part of the world you're checking in from, uh, whatever estate you're checking in from. Uh, my, my name is Marie Duanja. I'm the senior pastor of Mavuno Church. But apart from that, I'm also an entrepreneur. Uh, my wife, Caro, and I have begun quite a few businesses together. And actually, right now in our life, in this season of our life, our main source of income is actually through business. And so we are passionate about business. We believe that God is in the business of business. Uh, Psalm 21, 24 verse 1 says that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. You know, many times you'd see Christians, you'd think that what they really believe is that the church is the Lord's. Actually, it doesn't say that. It says the earth, which means business as well. And we are, cons we are, we are passionate. Uh, about uh, kingdom business. So last week, we started talking about how to lead in a crisis, how to understand the scope of this crisis, uh, that this is not just a momentary storm, that it's actually a, an entrance into an era, and then how to begin to structure yourself for the different stages of what is coming. Uh, if you missed that, you can go up on, on, on this platform. You'll be able to find uh, the recording for last week. Uh, but, you know, I want us to just begin. And th First of all, thank you so much for sending your questions, uh, interacting. It was such an engaging session. And even after that, you've kept sending us questions. So I just want to begin by reading a few uh, this morning. Lois says, Hi, Pastor M and Kanji. Thanks for an, an awesome service. 
please don't stop. You said something about looking for your creditors and working out a debt repayment plan. So my question is, what if I don't actually have a plan? Pasi, have you ever had people harassing you because you owe them money? I even changed my numbers several times. Please tell me how you handle such a situation. Uh, thanks for that, Lois. And I'm going to just give a few brief answers. I can't answer all the questions you raised, uh, but we'll be, we'll, we'll be, just keep asking them because we'll keep uh, revisiting them. We'll make them the source of our content for this show. Uh, but I want to say that uh, I'm going to be talking about this issue today, uh, Lois. So if you're, if, you're, if you're plugging in today, uh, this, is, this is your day. I'm glad you're here. But for now, let me just very briefly say that the book of Proverbs, and this is my conviction, Proverbs 22 verse 7 says that the borrower is a slave to a lender. And for me, I tend to treat debt like dynamite. Like I, I, <laughs> I treat it with a lot of care. I stay away from it as much as I can. Uh, you, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you ask whether I actually I feel you. I haven't been in debt uh, in the way that you're describing, but a few years back, uh, I put together a real estate project. My wife and I put together a real estate project and it ended up going through a lot of regulatory uh, delays with the government. And as a result, several investors pulled out uh, and we ended up owing them money uh, because they had paid their deposits for their project and we didn't have the cash sitting, uh, waiting. We had already invested that. that, that was part of the idea. But now we were waiting for other people to come in. And as we were waiting, that was the money we were going to use to liquidate them. Uh, but you know what ended up happening then is, of course, you owe somebody money. They're stretched wherever they are. I mean, they were very gracious with us, I have to say. But they're stretched. So when somebody calls you and says, hey, what's happening? Have you gotten my money? I can tell you, oh, my God, it was... <laughs> It was horrible. And I mean, we're still in that process. Uh, we're just, we're still pulling through the, 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 the there's been a lot of uh, progress in that uh, project. Uh, but I can tell you, I mean, that, that feeling when, some, when you see the phone ringing and you know it's somebody whose money you have and you don't have a way of paying it right now and you know they're stressed on the other side and, and that stress starts coming on to you as well. Uh, Lois, I feel you. And so we're going to be talking about it. Uh, we'll come back to that one uh, in a bit. Second question is uh, Silas. Uh, he says, Hi, Pastor M. Thank you for this much needed ministry. That was for me. I had slowed down on my farming and was thinking of shutting down altogether. But after I heard you, I realized this is not the time to give up. Uh, I'm actually an essential service. Yes. And I want to say yes. If you're a farmer, you are an essential service to our nation. Uh, please share more about how I can look after my staff right now, especially if I can't afford to pay them. Uh, that's a really good uh, question, Silas, and uh, thank, I'm so glad you shared that. I, I know I talked last week and I said, uh, in the middle of a crisis, in the, in, when a crisis hits your business, that's not the time to arbitrarily fire people. And, I, and, I, and you know, I explained a bit of why that is. Uh, because, you know, the problem is the crisis defines you. It actually sets, it actually begins to define your culture. It's an opportunity to define your culture in a way that you probably wouldn't have in a normal time. Uh, and when you just come, like I've seen some businesses doing, guys, go home. There's no money. Just go. What are you doing? You're eroding your credibility and your trust with your, your workforce. And what that, that thing is going to scar you <laughs> because you're creating a reputation for your business. Uh, and your fast constituents, your fast stakeholders are your staff. I know people say it's, it's the shareholders. I actually believe your staff because they're the ones who are putting their lives on the line for this business. So, so my thought is, uh, what you want to do in a time of crisis is to act with uh, as much authenticity and compassion as you're able to. I know you're going through pain yourself, but so do your staff. And that's the best thing. I mean, they can see it, especially in a crisis like this one. Everybody can see. In fact, they know that there's a problem and they're waiting for you to tell them what to do in that problem. So they understand that you're going through stress yourself and that the business has no money. So one of the first things I did is I wrote a memo to my staff. Uh, and I explained to them what I saw in this crisis. I said to them, this is what's happening. This thing is not just a little storm. It's going to be with us for a while. And then when I did that, I began to just, uh, first of all, I, I really affirmed them for the great work they've done. And if you've been a part of the Mavuno platforms, I think you agree with me. The Mavuno staff have done a phenomenal job. Those pastors have lost sleep. Uh, they've produced content. They've looked after their people. They've called them. They've cared. And I, and I just say to them, I really love my team. You guys have done a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And then I went ahead to just tell them, you know, this is, this, this is what this storm means for us. We may not have resources. We don't know. None of us know how things are going to go. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are run by the goodwill of the people of God who give. And they are affected as well in this crisis. So I said, we're going to pray for our people. We're going to trust God that things uh, stabilize for our people. 
Uh, but in the process, we must prepare. In fact, you remember the principle I gave you last, last week. You know, pray for the best, but prepare for the worst. And so I say to them, treat this salary. This was like the, April, the beginning of April salary. I said, treat it like it's your last, because we have no idea. And all of us just have to start now operating with the basis of every month we're living by faith. I mean, we always do that. It's just that it's not conscious. But I said, from now, this is where it's going to be, because we may not have the money to pay you next month. And I said, look, we have to do this together. And I shared uh, some of the things my wife and I are doing to reduce costs dramatically. I, I shared some of those things with them. And I said, these are some of the things we're doing to survive in this season. Uh, you need to get into an, uh, an emergency uh, survival plan as well in your homes. Uh, and I, I, I encouraged them. And then as I did that, I also be, uh, committed that I will consistently share with them. I said, I don't have all the answers, but I will keep con uh, connected. And guys, we're going to pull this through this. So, so this for me is how I'm uh, dealing with this crisis with my staff. One of the other ideas that we've shared as a staff is, uh, the, the, uh, as a leadership, is the, the, the ability for us to create care parks where you're able to give your staff uh, at least some dried goods for the next uh, few months, three, four months. And you're able to say, look, even if we can't pay, here's something that will tide us through this together. And what we're saying is, look, at the end of the day, I don't know how things are going to work out. I don't know if we're going to be intact the same way as a team. Uh, but one thing I do know is my hope and my prayer is that by the end of this time, even if we end up having to let some people go, I don't know how that will work. And by the way, that's not my desire. In fact, what I've told people is I'm committed that we will we'll finish this thing together. Uh, even if it means we work for nothing <laughs> for a season and people will have a choice. Some people might say, you know what, I'm happy, but my season has come to an end. And that's understandable as well. But my prayer is even if people end up leaving, they will still leave with that sense of my goodness, those people treated me with honor in that season. And I feel like what it will do for our culture, because I, I'm concerned as the leader, as the CEO of your business, you are the chief culture officer for your business. And so you want to build a good culture where your staff feel cared for and they want to give towards the work of what, you, what God has called you to. So I hope, I hope that's helpful uh, for you in this season. Uh, listen, if, uh, for those of you who didn't listen, I, I, I did. I mean, of course, I gave some more principles in the first one. So uh, if, you, if you didn't manage to listen to the first edition, uh, then please, the one just before this, then please uh, listen and catch up with some of the things you do. And also, by the way, if you have comments, I mean, I'm not the end all and be all. As you're listening, maybe there are things you're doing with your stuff that are even more innovative. Put those in the comments or, or maybe just alternative ways of thinking. Put those in the comment line and let's, de let's, let's, uh, let's learn together because that's what a community does. Um, and then the last question I'm going to read is by Rita. Uh, Hi, Pastor M. Uh, thanks for keeping it real. It really spoke to me. I'm struggling. I'm really struggling right now, she says, trying to work from home. I find myself really struggling just to manage the kids. Little fights everywhere. Being in the same confined sp space is just not working, she says. I'd like to hear from you and from others. What are you doing to stay sane? <laughs> and, and I, by the way, Rita, I feel you with that question. By the way, I, I don't know if you read uh, the InfoTrack uh, uh, COVID-19 poll that came out. Uh, I think it was on Monday. And they basically talked about the fact that 75% of Kenyans are worried about COVID-19. And there are high rates of fear and confusion right now among the population. Many people are afraid they're going to lose their jobs. Many people are afraid because they're having financial struggles. Many people are afraid and, and anxious because they're having marital strife like they've never had before. There's challenges that are facing us as a people right now. And I want to say this, that seasons of change will always bring uncertainty. And uncertainty will always bring conflict, a rise in conflict. Uh, that it comes with the territory. People are brittle. People are fearful. And so one of the things I want to just encourage you as a business person is cut some slack for your spouse. Cut some slack for your kids. This is not the season for you to come in and be the general and to say, oh, things are not working. What's happening? What's wrong? This is not the season for you to try and fix all the problems in your marriage that you've never been able to fix. Uh, at least that it's not going to change overnight. So my thought is cut people some slack and just understand hey, we are all in this together. All of us are scared. <laughs> and when you see somebody acting moody or acting or snapping, uh, be generous. Have, have real conversations, but also just be gracious. Understand, listen, none of us is acting in the, no these are not normal conditions uh, for all of us. So have conversations as a family and just figure out how can we be generous together. But one of the things I want to say is uh, what I found works uh, is creating family rhythms. So one of the things Kara and I have been very keen to do in this season is to create family rhythms. How do you create rhythms for yourselves and for the kids uh, so that you have a way that your day works? You know, we get up. And by the way, our kids, they're teenagers. 
So they're up by 5.30 every morning. I know, it's, I mean, some people would be like, uh, it's holiday, so let people sleep in. But I'm like, once you start getting into that, then your home will actually just deteriorate. So we've kept discipline uh, and we've encouraged the kids. We've talked to them about the why. Uh, they get up, we all get up. Uh, I tend to get up early. I get up at four. Uh, then we'll have our quiet time. Then we'll all exercise, including the kids. Everybody exercises. We shower. Uh, then we have breakfast. And by the way, we don't have a helper. We don't have a maid. And so basically one of us takes, takes t uh, turns in making the breakfast for everybody else. Uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll sit down once we've had breakfast, uh, study. And we have a study time that everybody's working, including the parents. Uh, so everyone's quiet during study time. We have breaks. Uh, we have a tea break and we have a lunch break, just like they would have at school. And we felt that that's the best thing we can give our kids, is just giving them a sense of order. And once that uh, study break is done, once their studies are done in the afternoon, uh, because they're in high school, they continue working until they're done with their work, then we'll have some free time. And people are, we encourage our kids to have hobbies. So free time is not just a time to put on headphones and listen to music. Uh, it's a time for you to do something creative. So one of our kids loves to run. One of our kids uh, enjoys cooking. One of our kids enjoys playing piano. So it's like, this is the time for you. Just get into a hobby space. We try and do the same. Something fun, something that you enjoy to do. Uh, we have uh, a walk with, my wife and I have a walk every evening. Uh, so we do that, it's like re religiously. Uh, at six, we take a walk just before curfew. And we're back home, we have dinner, we have our family devotions, and then we only watch TV on the weekend. That's our family routine. I'm not telling you it should be yours, but what's yours? How are you creating some order? Because when you create structure, it allows the family to have a sense of place. Uh, I'll also throw in just eating healthy. That's another thing we're doing right now. Having hobbies is very important for you as a leader. I garden. And so during my, my hobby time, I do gardening. Um, and I, I know it's going to work differently for everyone. I suspect, by the way, some of you are single parents. And so again, it's just a lot more pressure. I mean, why lie? That's just, you just have a lot more pressure than everybody else. Uh, but I do want to say that however you can make it work, so that your family has some routines in this season, uh, because we're all sharing the same office. We're all sharing the same workplace. And that's how we can keep sanity. One of the ways that we can keep sanity. How are you keeping sanity? Uh, tell us in the comment line, what are some things that you're finding useful for you and your family in this time? So today, we want to speak about killing your debt before your debt kills you. And that's really, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a topic that's really close to my heart. I'm so glad uh, that it was raised by Lois earlier. You know, we, uh, how do you dig out of the hole if you find yourself in massive debt in a season like this, when you don't even have a plan for how to get it out of it, how to pay it off? First of all, let me say, and I'm just going to start by, by putting this out, as a kingdom businessman, I believe that too many of us have bought into the world's message that debt is this necessary instrument uh, that you need leverage in your business, that this is the only way that you can uh, grow rapid enough momentum to scale your business. This is the only way that you can actually become big enough to employ people to do the things you want to do. Uh, this is a big thing. It's taught in business school and people have believed it uh, big time. Now, here's what I want to say. I mean, for me, I don't have a problem with knowledge. But I have to say that every knowledge for me as a kingdom businessman, I don't know if you're not, then that's different. But as if you're a kingdom business person, then all knowledge has to be submitted to God's word. Uh, God's word is our final, it's a final say on my business pr uh, practices. And I have challenges with that. You know, but the Bible, by the way, talks about that we must be renewed by the, trans by the transformation of our mind. That somehow we can't just buy into everything the world tells us in running business because this is kingdom business. And so... There, there are many things I've seen over the, over, over the years when it comes to this issue called debt. Uh, one of the first things I'd say about debt is that debt is presumptuous. I want to tell you five things that I see about debt. Uh, debt is presumptuous. Proverbs 27.1 warns us, Don't boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. You know, it's interesting that debt presumes we can control our future. But oh my goodness, how many of us are discovering right now in this crisis, in this season of COVID-19 that we're in right now, that none of us is in control of anything. We don't know what we're waking up into. And that's what the proverb is telling us. That's what King Solomon, who wrote the proverbs, is telling us. That <laughs> you can't even know what the day will bring forth. So how are you presuming that you will have the power to do it in the way that you're promised to do it when you take a debt? Uh, number two, debt steals freedom. Uh, by the way, these principles, are, you can find them in my book, financial fitness, um, and it's interesting because this is how I treat personal debt, 
but it's also how I think about business debt as well. Uh, debt steals freedom. Proverbs 22 verse 7, the famous verse, it says, The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a servant to a lender. Here's the thing, and Lois described it well, there's anxiety, there's pressure, there's stress. When I, when I keep getting those calls, those threatening calls by people who I owe money, that's what it means to be a slave. That's what it means when somebody else determines my mood. <laughs> you know, um, I remember one of, our, one, one of my good friends, he, he was running a pretty good business, a successful business, and then he was identified by one of these global uh, funds that look for businesses to, pump, to put money into, and they said, look, we, we found you. You're actually shortlisted. You're one of the guys we want to scale, to help you scale your business. He was so excited. He was pictures was in the papers, uh, got the money from these guys. And at first it went well. The business actually scaled. And then he hit some rough patches. And I'll never forget his story about how the same guy, that same guy who came to his office to help him sign the papers, he didn't even have to go in the office to sign. I mean, the same guy who came to bring the papers for him to get the funding is the same one who came across the desk and said, we have to take your securities. And this man had invested and bought some units, some houses that were bringing in some residual income for his family and lost everything simply because he didn't pay attention to this fact that the borrower is a slave to the lender. We can't be presumptuous when it comes to debt. Number three, debt is expensive. Uh, Proverbs 22 verse 26 to 27, it says, Do not be a man who strikes hands in pledge or puts up security for debt. If you lack the means to pay, your very bed will be snatched up from under you. You know that person who's lending you money is not an NGO. They're not. <laughs> they are banking, <laughs> pun intended, on profiting from your impatience. Th yeah, that's what, that's exactly. They know that you're impatient and they're going to actually profit from your impatience. The, the power of compound interest is going to work against you. And they, they, they know that as they bring you uh, these instruments uh, that they're bringing to you. And you'll end up paying far more than this, 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 uh, that, than you borrowed. Many times, many people I know have ended up paying a lot more than what they thought they were, they were, they were borrowing. Uh, it's called fine print. Debt is opportunity destroying. Um, Proverbs 17 verse 18, a man lacking in judgment strikes hands in pledges and puts up security for his neighbor. You know, here's the thing I've, I've come to understand. Eh? When investment opportunities come, because investment opportunities come to everybody, but too many of us have our hands tied because all our capital is locked up. All our, all our resources are locked up and we are leveraged to somebody else. And so God even brings you an opportunity. You're in no place to take uh, advantage of that opportunity. Sometimes God brings you a kingdom opportunity, not even a, a financial opportunity, an opportunity for you to bless somebody, an opportunity for you to do the reason that to, to solve the problem your business was created for, but you're too caught up, too tied up, uh, being chased by creditors uh, for you to even be able to respond to what God is saying. So it destroys opportunity. Number five, debt is self-centered. And this is an ouch one for me, that debt often focuses more on me than on God. And here's the problem. It, it actually denies God the opportunity to say no. If he's a senior partner and I'm the junior partner, I'll bring him an event, uh, an opportunity. I say, God, I want to invest in this. And God actually says, that's not the way to go. But you know what? Uh, heck, whatever you want, I'm going to do it my way. So I go and borrow money and then I do it. And then God, guess what happens when it crashes? I'm like, God, how could you allow my business to crash? And God is almost like, what part of I allowing? <laughs> does, what, how does that even come into play right now? You didn't even ask me. You didn't even wait for me to be able to answer. Here's the thing. I believe that God often wants to provide miraculously for us and for our businesses. But then we are so caught up. We're so busy doing it our own way. And I know that James uh, chapter 4 verse 2 says, You do not have because you don't ask. Many times we're too busy doing it to ask. There's an old song we used to sing, an old hymn, some of you might know it. It used to say, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we don't carry everything to God in prayer. That's not just a song, it's for real. For us in business, it's so much for real. And you know, one of the things I've come to understand is, if God is a senior partner and I'm the junior partner, then it means I consult, I ask him. What do you want for this business? This tender, should I submit it? Read the Bible. You see guys like King David, he'd do that. Lord, do I go to war here? 
Is this something you want me to do? And, and, and some of you are probably asking at this point, but how do, I, how do I even get to hear God's voice? How do I, I mean, am I sitting down waiting and opportunities are passing as I'm waiting on God? But listen, I mean, I talked about this uh, two weeks ago and I, I'm, I'm happy to keep speaking about it. And I'm probably going to find another time to talk about how do you listen to your partner's voice uh, in your business. But one of the things I want to say is you learn to hear his word. And in, in, in the month of May, I'm going to be challenging us, by the way, to, to read through uh, some portions of God's word together as this community, as this business community, portions that will speak specifically to our business. And, 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 and as we learn to listen to him, God will actually direct you to do some things that are counterintuitive, that are very different from what other people are doing. Things that your professor at business school would never have taught you. And you'll be shocked to find that that's exactly the solution you need uh, for your business. Uh, my wife and I, we built uh, our guest house. Uh, at, it cost us 30 million shillings to put up. Um, and we did not take a single loan. We didn't even use our salaries. What we used was something called the power of a divine idea. And I'm going to be talking about divine ideas hopefully at some point. But how the power of a divine idea. We own real estate worth a lot more than that. And again, a lot of that has come from the power of divine ideas. Listen, people. The world has nothing on you. There are things that God's word will te- God, God will teach you in his word as a kingdom person that will help you think and outthink anything that they could teach you in business school. I'm not saying business school is wrong. Actually, you need the knowledge. Knowledge is important. But hey, it's only when we take that knowledge and we submit it to God's word that it becomes wisdom. And what we really need is not just knowledge. What we need is wisdom. And so, hey, just by being patient, listening to God, we've learned how to multiply resources by the power of partnership. That's a, that's a significant resource. We, we'll talk about some of those principles, I hope, later. Uh, size per time. Understanding your season. That not everything comes at the same time. There's a season for this, as the Bible says, a season for everything under the sun. There's a season for you to learn some lessons that having money right now, uh, for some of you, uh, getting a lot of money in your business will actually destroy your thinking. And there's something called size per time. The principle of divine ideas. Uh, and also divine helpers. By the way, there are people who, some, in some situations, actually knowing the right person in the right place is worth much more than anything your bank account could ever throw at a problem. And we've learned the power of divine helpers when God brings divine helpers our way. We've also learned the power of divine acceleration, that God doesn't work at the same pace as everybody else. And so some of these things have only come because of waiting, because of listening and understanding how God speaks. So, so that is not necessarily the way for you to go. That's my, I want to just begin by putting that on the ground right now for us this evening. Now, I know what I've said tonight will not be popular with everybody. And not everybody here who's listening to this will agree with me. Uh, some of you will argue and say, look, I've used debt and it has worked. But here's what I want to say. Uh, we're not here to talk about what works. We're here to talk about what God desires for the business that he gave you and the purpose that he created it for. I firmly believe that God's work, God's done God's way, will never lack God's provision. And I also firmly believe that the reason a lot of us uh, put ourselves in trouble is because we try and do it our way, as opposed to letting Jesus be at the center. So, and, and I want to say this, having said all the stuff I've said this evening, the reality is many of us, we will find ourselves in debt, We will find ourselves in the course of our business, finding ourselves owing money to people. And I'm no exception. Uh, And I shared that earlier. I'm no exception. So I don't even speak any of this stuff to judge anybody here. But I'm encouraged this evening because one thing I've realized is that when I read God's word, God is a God of a second chance. He is such a gracious God. Uh, He is such a forgiving God. There's a scripture that I read, and I want to read it over you as a business person right now, because there's somebody who might be hearing the words I've said and just feeling so discouraged. I want to read these words over you right now, because I really believe these are the words God would be saying to us this evening. Psalm 103, verse 8 to 14. And here's what it says. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor anger forever. He does not treat us like our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, 
So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. And I feel good about that because, I mean, it's like God knows I've got issues, man. God knows I'm dust. God knows I'm impatient. God knows I mess up. God knows even when I know the right thing, often I'll choose to do the wrong thing. He knows that stuff. And he's willing to forgive me if I will come back and repent and realign with his word. And I sense this is God's word for us in this season as people in business, especially those who know him and are listening to this, that he wants us to realign our businesses back to him. Now, next week, I'm going to be talking uh, about how to get out of debt, actually digging yourself out of this hole, because I believe that uh, there's, there's, a, there's a solution and there is a solution. So don't despair. We're going to talk about that in a lot of depth next week. I just ran out of time today, so I thought, let me push this uh, into next week. But I, want to do, I, I do want to say that one of the things I found myself doing in this season, um, it's so easy in this season to be frantic, to be running around, to be figuring out how do I get money here? How do I hustle here? And when I, as I've reminded myself that Jesus is he's, he's the captain, he's basically the CEO of this thing, he's the, he's, he's the senior partner, I found myself actually spending more time in prayer than I normally do. Um, not because I'm a pastor, but even in my business. So I pray for Mavuno a lot more. I pray for uh, the businesses we're involved in a lot more. Uh, I actually, uh, apart from the time I have in, my, in the morning praying, I find myself taking a, a, an hour prayer walk over lunch. And it's not because I'm such a spiritual person. It's just because desperate times call for desperate measures. And what I found is the more I'm putting, the more I'm aligning God, uh, my, my staff to God, the more I'm actually seeing success. Uh, I'm actually seeing some breakthroughs beginning to happen. But more than the breakthroughs, I think the most important thing is just how peaceful I feel in this situation. And I think every one of us, that's what this is about. We need to lead in a space where there's chaos around us, but there's peace within. So in this COVID-19 time, I want to encourage you, let's, let's draw near to God. Those of you who've not had Jesus at the center of your business, this is a time for you to start a realigning and putting him right there. Uh, the world wants us to be in the center, but we're saying as God's people, no, 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 Jesus, be the center. I mean, I've tried this thing of being the center. It doesn't work. So let me put Jesus at the center. And I want to conclude in prayer. I'm going to be praying for our businesses this evening. I know God has some great things he's going to do as we uh, practice some of the things we're learning. Uh, let us know, by the way, uh, how you're applying this stuff. Let us know lessons you're learning. Let us know what you think. I mean, put, put something in the comment. What do you think? Uh, is this stuff resonating? Is God speaking to you through it? Are you applying it? Any testimonies you have as you apply it? Also, let us know if you have prayer requests or things we can just be praying for you. Any topics you'd like us to talk about apart from this one that we're talking about tonight. Remember, if you'd like to stay connected to the community, if you'd like to receive updates uh, that are very specifically related to you as a kingdom entrepreneur, then please uh, click, click that link. I uh, would love for you to... Um, to be part of this community, to be the first to receive those updates. And if you've enjoyed this and you know someone who would benefit from it, uh, don't leave without sharing. It's going to stay on. We're going to make sure it stays online. And so please share it with somebody. We want as many people to be receiving a word that brings hope and brings a challenge to them in this season, something that will be practical and help them in their business. So allow me then to lead us in a time of prayer. My Father, thank you so much for this evening. Thank you that we can talk um, and we can base our conversation on ancient wisdom, the wisdom of your word. Thank you because you are good as we sang earlier. Thank you because you are at the center of it all. And when you're at the center, we are not shaken. Lord, I want to bring this community before you, every single one of these entrepreneurs who is listening to me tonight. I especially want to bring Liz. Uh, thank you because as I read her prayer request, uh, she has business machines that she had, which was importing for her business. And now they're stuck in China. And Lord, she's talked about the fact that she's looking for local solutions uh, and praying for divine ideas. I am praying, Lord, that you would give her divine ideas. I'm praying actually that not just for her, but for other people here who've been depending on imports for their business. Turn our minds around, Lord, as a nation and begin to show us local solutions for local problems. That, Lord, we will move away from even being in the place where we are dependent on others to manufacture our simpler solutions. I pray that you'd give Liz people to help her manufacture those machines because that's what she's looking for right now. And I pray that out of this would just come some divine revelation uh, that would cause her to be a solution provider for many people in her industry and many who are listening to this prayer as well. Lord, I think of Drew uh, who took a business loan in February and then all her guests cancelled. Uh, she's in the hospitality business. All her Airbnb guests cancelled. I am praying, Lord, have mercy upon you. 
Lord Jesus, I know there's some money she was waiting for from somewhere that would help her extinguish some of her debts. I pray, Lord, miraculously release the money that is owed to her. Release it in Jesus' name. And I pray that, Lord, she'll be able to pay off her debts. And I pray for anybody else listening to this prayer who is in debt right now, who's waiting to be paid by people. And I pray that, Lord, you would release release divine resources uh, for your people. Lord, I pray for Sally who is praying that her client would renew uh, his policy or their policy this year and even take up additional products. And Lord, I pray for anybody who's in that place where they've, they've given proposal and because of this crisis right now, things are all on hold. I'm praying unlock, unlock, unlock. Miraculously unlock for your people and glorify yourself. And I pray that Sally would testify uh, that the Lord heard our prayer as we joined together and we agreed on her behalf. I pray for Esther B., I thank you for the business, the new business, uh, the, the natural anti-aging skincare brand. And Lord, I, as she's thinking about how to launch that in this changed business environment, I'm praying for great wisdom. I'm praying for ideas. Show her whether this is the right time. Show her how to position it for this season. And I pray for any others who are in the process of launching or in the process of starting. And I pray that, Lord, you'd cause us not to hold off. It's so easy to hold off in fear. But Lord, I pray that in this new normal, you'd show us how to translate every product, every idea, every service we have into something that is relevant for people in this season. And Lord, I also pray for Nancy. She says that there are business proposals she had made before this crisis, and she's praying that they will not be shelved because of this crisis. I pray for her that Lord should come out stronger, smarter, seize the opportunities that are in front of her. I pray that Lord Jesus, you would open doors for her that no one could shut. And I pray for all the people here, even those who are facing setback in their business, that they would find amazing uh, doors opening in this season. Even in the year, the Bible tells us for Isaac, uh, that in the year of drought, he he sowed and he he reaped a hundredfold. I pray for these that, Lord, they would have great harvests that would be able to testify only God could have helped us in such a difficult time. And so, Lord, I pray for your people right now. I pray that, Lord, you would deliver us from worldly thinking and you would teach us to think Uh, in a kingdom way and I pray that in the words of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 that we would trust in the Lord with all our heart we would lean not on our own understanding in all our ways we will acknowledge you and you will direct our path in Jesus name I pray amen God bless you God's people have a wonderful evening again just let me know what you think Uh, say give me a high five on the comment line right now talk to somebody you've seen just tell them goodbye share this with a friend and look forward to sing you next week.